वेलकम वेलकम टू सेशन ऑन टाइप्स एंड जनरेशन ऑफ कंप्यूटर्स टाइप्स एंड जनरेशन ऑफ कंप्यूटर्स द कंप्यूटर्स कैन बी क्लासिफाइड इनटू डिफरेंट टाइप्स डिफरेंट टाइप्स दिस इज माय ओन क्लासिफिकेशन यूजुअली सम ऑफ दिस विल नॉट बी कंसीडर्ड एज कंप्यूटर्स आल्सो बट दे हैव व्हाट इज कॉल्ड एज कंप्यूटिंग कैपेबिलिटी बट दे हैव what is called as computing capability so the first one is wearable computer embedded computer personal digital assistant smartphone tablet head mounted displays thin clients and then notebook computer laptop computer desktop computer workstation server mainframe quanta computer molecular computer if you consider this first uh, six actually at least first six, six then sometimes they may not be considered as a computer but they have lot of capability now today smartphone is equivalent to that of a computer of course it has own limitations the main limitation is the screen size but it has the pro it has very good processing capability the processing capability of a smartphone is more than that of uh, the desktop computer of say 5 years back so a wearable computer you can say it is something like a your watch which you can wear, wear which you can measure, which can measure say your uh, pulse rate bp etc so wearable computer embedded computer so that means uh, in the form of a chip so that can be embedded into that can be placed inside another uh, device so usually there there will be placed inside the toys inside the toys and then personal digital assistants personal digital assistants where you can store the information about the say the addresses etc people use this digital assistants but no, nowadays nobody is using this digital assistants because we have these smartphones before these smartphones digital assistants were used that means all the contact details were stored in the form of in in pds personal digital assistants next tablet you can say an extension of smartphone but unfortunately they have less processing capability when compared to the smartphones but tablets you, the advantage is uh, you can have big screen relatively big screen when compared to the smartphones and then nowadays we are talking about what are called as head mounted displays you might have seen it in some movies head mounted displays so which are which are attached to your eyes uh, to face and uh, you can see in movies actually so head mounted displays you, they are used for virtual reality they are used for virtual reality maybe we are mo moving towards head mounted displays we are moving towards head mounted displays they will be used extensively in another 5 to 10 years to come so you, you get a virtual experience you cannot imagine what you can view so in fact for watching movies so 3d movies the best thing is head mounted display head mounted display okay already we have 3d movies but we do, we are not getting that uh, level of experience so the experience changes drastically if you use head mounted displays so they will come they will be available for common man in few years to come and then the thin client in the sense that you can say a small computer a small computer you can say miniature version of say desktop computer so you have notebook computer you can say a laptop computer which is which is of the size of a notebook and then laptop computer you already know desktop computer you know workstation you can say an extension of a desktop computer a desktop computer nowadays of course we are not using these workstations otherwise we we used to have some what are called as sun workstations they have more processing capability than that of desktop computers and then the server server computers which are which are considered as uh high capable uh, computer server when compared to the desktop and laptop and then mainframe computers very large computers very large computers but nowadays we are not talking about this mainframe computers because we have servers mainframe computers uh, computing actually started with you can say mainframe computers the mainframe computer size usually is that of equivalent to that of a room room size it fits a room so still so in few cases mainframe computers are used but they are not used extensively 
सुपर कंप्यूटर्स एक्चुअली सुपर कंप्यूटर्स इन द लिस्ट सुपर कंप्यूटर इज मिसिंग सुपर कंप्यूटर्स आर ऑल्सो अवेलेबल यू कैन से हाई एंड वर्शन ऑफ सर्वर्स वेरी हाई एंड वर्शन ऑफ सर्वर्स सुपर कंप्यूटर्स एंड देन दिस क्वांटम कंप्यूटर्स स्मॉल कर कंप्यूटर्स विच डजेंट एग्जिस्ट गूगल हैज इंट्रोड्यूस दिस क्वांटम कंप्यूटर बट बट इट्स नॉट ए फुल वर्शन so you have this quantum computers and molecular computers people imagine or researchers imagine that this will be the future computers coming to the generations of computers you have different generations of computers first generation computers that means when when computing actually started so they are bulky computers they are large in size they used vacuum tubes they used punched cards for storing the data no usb us pen drives no usb drives etc etc no ram etc punched cards were used and to read the data from punched cards card readers were used printers were used to print the data printers were used to print the data uh, you don't have these uh, monitors etc and programming was mainly done using what is called as machine language in the sense that you can see in simple terms in terms of ones and zeros you have to write a sequence of ones and zeros so there are the, uh, examples are eniac univac ibm 650 there are the examples second generation computers started using this what is called as transistor and computers were still bulky in size and you can say that they, those computers are called as mainframe computers equal to the size of a room and multiple users were supported that means same computer was used by multiple users still punched cards card readers and magnetic tapes were used magnetic tapes were used programming was done using the what is called as symbolic codes or assembly language where instead of using ones and zeros you will write something like add a b indicates add the content of a and b add is the instruction there are the, you can say there are symbolic instructions and large organizations used them initially ibm 7000 honeywell 400 are examples third generation computers with third generation computers we have this integrated circuits also transistors are integrated into an integrated circuit and size of computers decrease drastically so you can say that the personal computers or desktop computers which which can sit on your desktop very small in size relatively and high level programming languages were introduced that means you can uh, do programming using programming languages like c c++ java etc IBM 360 and DEC PDP-8 are initial third generation computers. Next came again the fourth generation computers, and high level programming languages were used extensively. Speed has increased enormously, and size of computers also decreased. Size of computers also decreased, and people started connecting computers using what is called as computer network. Now. we we don't use just our own computer we can connect to the computers and then we can share the information so internet and world wide web services are also provided that means you can connect to the internet that means you can download information from anywhere from anywhere using the internet and world wide web is a layer of abstraction which was created over the internet uh, which uses your task which uses your task internet is required over the internet you have what is called as world wide web world wide web so using world wide web you do not bother where the information is available you can access the information as if it is present in, inside your computer so dell optiplex lenovo idea center etc are examples and then came this fifth generation computers this can be considered as computers uh, of future computers of future Uh, but still some of the features features some of the features are also available nowadays in the in the current computers so you can use voice you can use voice ai based computers quantum computers molecular computers etc and the programming languages are not just high level languages they are non processor languages non processor languages because you can you can specify just what you want you need not specify how how you want to get that uh, result so in the case of uh, previous generations you have to specify both what and how you have to write the program you have to write the algorithm whereas here you do not write how 
you want to get the result you just mentioned what is the result that is required so sql st structured query language is an example of non processor language and tomorrow we may go with the natural language also that means you can instruct a computer to do some task using natural languages like telugu and english also so this is regarding the generations of computers generations of computers there are the five generations of computers so thank you shubhamastu thank you very much for joining